welcome to another Pixlet tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to look at the crop tool and the marquee tool. When you crop something you remove portions of the image that are not essential and you select only that portion of the image and you delete everything outside of it. So in the example here of the, the bench, the bench has been selected and everything outside that grid will be cut away leaving only that bench. The marquee tool allows you to select portions of an object or a file or a photo or a subject for editing. So in this example the bench has been selected and it's going to be perhaps cut out of that picture and made into a new image that's transparent and that can be put into uh, another image over another background. So you're editing it, you're not cutting away. Let's start with cropping first. So I'm going to open an image and the bridge is the part of the image that I want to keep and I don't need the rest so I need to crop it. So in the crop tool there are some options before I crop. So no restriction means that I can select any area that I want. So I might want to crop all of that or just the actual bridge and as soon as you let go of the mouse button you have the uh, selection area that you can alter by dragging the handles. So that's no restriction. I can restrict it by aspect ratio so that when I try and draw it that's the only box I'm given that I have to move it. Changing the handles does not give me any bigger area. Output size, I can actually define a size that I want. At the moment that's the size of the, pi the picture, 2560 pixels by 1600 pixels. Now if I only want a little bit of the bridge, I'm going to make that say 1280 by 720. And that's the size of the crop that I'll be able to select. So when I define the area, that's as far as I can go. That's 1280 by 720. I can move it around, but that's the only way I can change the handles. They won't go any bigger. Now for my purposes, I'm just going to select no restriction. Because all I want is this bridge. Without the path in front of it. And once I've selected it, double click it to crop it and then save it. Save it as a JPEG, 100% quality, to the hard drive. Now if I want to have a look at that picture There's the, the picture, just the bridge. So I've cropped away everything else. Now the marquee tool selects part of an image and then allows you to do something else with that part that you've selected. So let's open an image. Let's open Shack in Field. And I only want part of this image because I want to cut that shack out and place it onto another image. So I don't want all the background. So the marquee tool, there are two types of marquee tool. The elliptical tool, which will allow you to select a circle, or the square. And again, you have no restriction, aspect ratio, or fixed size. When you select an image with feather, so if I make the feather a bit higher, and then select the part I, that I want to keep and feather gives it feathery edge so there's no real clear lines which might make it easier to blend in a bit later. If you don't use feather, we put feather to two or three, then select the image again, 
and the selection and then cut away it's a straight edge which might make it harder to blend in on another image so I'm going to open the image the shack in the field and I want a little bit of feathering maybe 12 take that much and instead of doing what I did before which was edit and invert the selection and then leave the shack and remove the rest of the background this time I'm going to actually cut that shack out and create a new image from it so I'm going to cut and you can sort of see the feathering on the, the edges there and create a new image from the clipboard and make it transparent we'll call that shack transparent now we we'll see the background there is transparent the checkerboard and I'm going to save that image to my hard drive as a PNG a transparent full quality image And I'll come back and use that in a minute. I'm going to open an image. And it's this image that I want to import the shack that I just selected and just sit it on top of the hill and have it blend in. This one's a fairly large image. It's sort of close to the close to the size of the one that I just selected. So I'm going to add, open an image as a layer and select the transparent shack and move it down a little bit uh, I just want it to sit on the top of that hill so I need to cut away some of the background of the shack so that it blends in with the hill and the sky now I could use the magic wand tool for that but I'm just going to use the eraser and in order to do that I want to enlarge the area so I can see what I'm doing so I want to cut away all of this blue sky here and retain this background now because the shack is, an, is a layer and it's on top of the background layer so it's on the top of that and it's transparent as soon as I hit the eraser it's going to erase the background of layer one and reveal the background of the background layer now you can make the brushes bigger to do that so the brush is only nine at the moment and because it's close to the edge I'd, I'd want to do a small pen to get the edge right and then it can increase the brush size so if I increase it even more so I can see what I'm doing small brush and I'm just going in close to the edge of that shack and try and define the edge and then increase the brush size so maybe 50 no, too big 30 where I can paint over that large area without deleting part of the house we go back to 100% and it will take a fair bit of time and patience to remove all that background just make sure it all blends in when you get down to these edges here then you can use the tools like smudge to smudge it a little bit so they're not so defined or you could use the clone stamp tool to by control clicking taking a, a snap of an area and trying to clone it over the edge so that you just try to make the edges disappear so you can't see that there is a another picture there because the grass is not quite the same 
So I'll go away and finish that and then come back and show you the finished picture. So there's the finished picture. The uh, shack in the field has been imported as a new layer using layer, open images layer. And then I've used some, some of the tools in the toolbox here to try and blend it in. So I've used the clone stamp tool by selecting an area. Control click, select an area and then in this part here I've can click just to try and blend those edges in. And I've used the smudge tool where you can smudge some of the, the, the edges just to, to so they're not so straight. And I've used the eraser to erase the background. And then save that as an image. Now what I could do with it now is resize it and put it in as a desktop background. So resizing, take off the constrained proportions. So I could add my own height and width. And save that as a JPEG. Save it. I'm using Windows 7 so I can replace that background by right clicking, personalize, selecting that picture. So that becomes the new desktop background. So that's one thing you could do with a marquee selection. And the marquee tool also has an elliptical selection. So let's open an image. And in this image, all I want is the rows and nothing else. So before I do that, I'm going to create a new transparent image, which is the, the final completed size that I want. So go to image size. Deselect that so I can change the dimensions. So I want something that's 640 times 480. So I want to resize the picture to that size first and then save it. Hundred percent to the hard drive. Then I can close it. Alright, so create a new transparent image so I can have somewhere to put the rows when I select it. So new image. And I want it to be 640 by 480 transparent the rows. And OK. So now open my resaved image as a layer, the rows resized, and it should fill the same width and height of the new image. Then using the marquee tool. I want to select just the rows as close as possible without taking much of that background. So if I use the aspect ratio I can sort of get close to the edges there. So that's a, it's got some background but I will uh, erase that. Then we're going to edit and inverse the selection. So everything but the rows will be cut away. And then do edit, cut. So I'm left with just the rows and I need to clear up some of this background and remove it. And I'm going to use the eraser for that. With a small brush and perhaps increase it so I can see a little better. Change the size of the brush to make that easier to fill in once you've done the edge. All right, just about finished. So I can go back. And now I want to crop that rose as close as possible to the edge.
So I'll click to crop and I'll save that image. There's the rows cropped. 100% JPEG. So what can I do with a picture like that? So, right, so I've got a brochure in Word, one of the templates, and I wanted to replace that picture with the one I just did. So I'm going to change the picture and select the rows cropped. Insert that. And because it's transparent, it sort of fits in okay. You need time and practice before you can get it right.